Hello Composers, today I present you with this plugin for Sibelius called Graphical MIDI Tools, which will basically add some graphical MIDI editing capabilities to the program. Among its features, it includes a graphical continuous controller automation module, a graphical velocity editor, and a little mini piano roll. These tools have proved useful for producing more realistic mockups or simply having more control over the MIDI sequence. All modifications are stored in the score as well as in the MIDI file generated by the Sibelius export function, so you will get them when you open the file in any sequencer or DAW. The plugin is completely developed in Sibelius scripting language called Manuscript, so no additional software is needed. Now, as some of you may know, Manuscript is not originally conceived for creating graphical interfaces, so through a series of workarounds we'll be able to push this limitation and get something similar to a graphical interactive interface. So, let me show you how this works. The first thing we have to do is to install the Graphical MIDI Tools plugin, just as any other plugin. You can find the instructions for doing this in the Sibelius site, I will also post the link in the description of the video in case you have never done this before. And once the plugin is installed, you should find the Graphical MIDI Tools options in the plugins menu. Now, before we can start using the plugin, it is essential that we assign a keyboard shortcut to it. This plugin only makes sense if used through a keyboard shortcut, not from the menus as you will see. So, for our second step, we'll go to the File tab, see Values Preferences, look for Keyboard Shortcuts, then select the Plugins category and search for Graphical MIDI Tools. Now assign a key to the plugin. It's very important here that you don't use a combination of Shift with a key, but rather a single and plain key, otherwise it will result too uncomfortable. Don't worry if you find that most keys are already taken, just pick one you don't use often and override it. In my case, for example, I never use the W, so I pick that key. Once we have assigned the keyboard shortcut, we can start working with the plugin. This plugin works on a bar basis, so in order to activate it, we have to first select a bar by clicking on it, and Sibelius will paint it in blue, and then we press the plugin key, in my case the W, but use whichever key you have chosen. One strike and the interface will appear. This interface we see here is built from standard bar objects, lines, shapes, texts, only that they are positioned and colorized as needed. Now, Sibelius scripting language cannot detect mouse clicks or movements, so let's see how the plugin deals with this. We will perform first the most basic action, and that is to close the interface. In order to do this, we will select this red square with the X by making a click over it. You can see it's a bit highlighted. After that, we press the key and the interface closes. What happens here is that the plugin knows which one is a selected object, so it acts in consequence, executing the corresponding action. Let's try something useful now. We will check out the continuous controller automation feature. So, we first select a bar and open the interface by striking the plugin key. As I said, manuscript language cannot detect the mouse movement or clicks, but it can detect the object's positions. So, in the top left, we will find our auxiliary object, which will work as our pencil. Think of this shape, which represents something else in music notation, as a pencil we can move and use to draw things over the canvas. So, we drag the pencil to any place inside the lane, and then we strike the plugin key. By doing so, a node will appear. This dot here represents the value of the modulation wheel at this point in the score. The dashed line means that the value is kept for the rest of the timeline. Now, if we move the pencil and strike the key, we add a new node. What is happening here is that the plugin is adding the necessary MIDI commands as we build the curve. We can continue adding nodes as necessary. We can even continue drawing the curve in the following bar by opening it and adding more nodes. Don't worry if the buttons are repeated or if you've got many pencils, you can use any one of them. They will all be gone when we close the bars. So let's hear the result. You can hit play by pressing the spacebar or any of the other usual ways, or you can use this handy yellow button, which will start playback for only this stuff and from this measure, something that is convenient when you're trying to adjust a passage and you need to go over it several times.
To work with other continuous controllers, we can select any of these color tabs. Hit the plugin key and the corresponding lane will be opened. These tabs are completely configurable. In this case, I have the factory defaults, which are modulation wheel, expression, channel volume and panning. If you want to change it, you have to select the configuration button at the bottom right. Strike the key and the setup dialog will appear. As you can see, up to six tabs can be activated at the same time. You can choose which MIDI controller each tab handles. You can also select a color for the tab and even the label it will have. For example, let's say we would like to change the first one for the brightness control number 74 and to put it in a violet color and label it BRI. We save the preferences and the changes are reflected. As another example, let's try the pitch bend. Another feature is the Velocity Editor, which allows to edit notes velocities in a graphical way. To open the editor, select the button at the bottom left and strike the key. The Velocity Editor will open. Again, here we will be using the pencil, but this time it will be setting the value of the velocity. These dashed vertical lines mean that no velocity has been set for those notes. So C values will decide the playback velocity according to expression and playback configuration. And one more thing, if you are editing the velocities for a group of notes in the same position, that is to say a chord, the value will be assigned all the same for each and every note. In order to edit the velocity independently, select the note head and strike the plugin key. Now the vertical bar is displayed without its border, signifying that the value is applied to one single note and not to the group. Another main feature of the plugin is a little piano roll view which allows to make slight modifications on the duration and starting position of the notes. Something that is useful for making the melodies more human-like, emphasizing legato fills or generating custom arpeggios. In this editor we will not use a pencil, but instead we will work directly with the mouse, selecting one of the red stripes which represent the sound of a note. These are technically vim lines which are painted in red. We can drag and move the stripe horizontally. Then we press the plugin key and the sound now changes its position. Keep in mind that the rhythm node will not be affected by these changes, only where the sound starts. If we want to change the length of the sound, we can click on one of the edges of the red stripe. Once we move the edge, we strike the plugin key and the changes are applied. We can move the sound even out of the original bar, but the rhythm node will still remain the same. Notice that these modifications could be done manually by introducing the parameters in the inspector window. What we're doing here is basically changing those parameters in a graphical, more intuitive way. The mini piano roll currently does not support changing the pitch of the note, so moving the stripe vertically will be ignored. There are two arrows here at the top and bottom, which will work for scrolling the piano roll up and down. Just as any other button in this plugin, Select it and then strike the key. Well folks, those are the main features of the plugin. Now for some final comments. First, this plugin is not an absolute replacement of a sequencer or a digital audio workstation. You will still need to do some final adjustments to the mockup there, and though this may not get you to the final result, it will certainly take you close to it, enabling you to prepare better drafts you may want to show before moving to the sequencer stage. Or it will simply help you at trying your composition when it comes to crescendos, diminuendos, brass swells, etc. Secondly, the plugin is written in manuscript, a language that was not conceived for this type of graphical applications, so some limitations arise. 1. The elements building the interface are common bar objects, so you are able to move them and fool around by breaking things. Try not to do it, but don't worry if it happens accidentally. 
All elements are marked so that they disappear when the bar is closed. Also, if you are to print a score, remember to close the bar so that the elements of the interface are not printed. Number 2. Sibelius does not allow drawing lines which are too small. So, a workaround has been applied using big lines, which can actually have a short length. But don't worry if you see from time to time a little hair going off the main path when you put two nodes too close. Number 3. Magnetic positioning. Sibelius has a tendency to align every bar object to a written node. This can be an issue when working with precise movements. A workaround has been applied also here that helps in this matter. But you may find the need to accommodate things manually, especially when working with the mini piano roll. Overall, I hope you like and enjoy this plugin and you find it useful. This plugin requires Sibelius 7.5 or higher. It has been tested on PC and Mac. Just make sure you have a version that supports plugin installation. For instance, Sibelius First does not support installing plugins, so it wouldn't work. You can acquire the plugin from my personal webpage. I will post the link in the description. Your contribution to this project is very important for supporting this development and the addition of new upcoming features. And for a final note, if you are a film composer, please check out the score maps, also available on my webpage. Thanks and in any doubt, please contact me by email or Facebook. Bye for now, best regards.